Uh, this show you're about to see is uh, a product of the pandemic. I wrote the script uh, before it all began a little bit, and then we thought we couldn't really uh, do it anymore. And then we decided, why not? We still should. So we all quarantined together, many of the cast you'll see tonight, for two weeks last August in the woods of Northwestern Washington um, and made a video, which was the first version of this show. Uh, and then through the, the magic of modern medicine, we are now able to actually um, bring it to you in person uh, on this great new truck that is the new Fox & Bigger uh, Mobile Performing Arts Stage. Our music tonight is written and performed by Bellingham, Washington's own Hot Damn Scandal. We are so happy to be uh, here with them. Uh, if you like the music tonight and want to hear what other sounds these folks make, definitely look them up online. Uh, feel free to talk to some of the band after the show. They've got a really pretty uh, little merch booth that's set up somewhere nearby. To your left. To my left. It's um, on the, on the corner stage. of the stage. Of the other stage. Oh, on the, okay, yeah. Go check it out. It's really cute. Um, and they've got vinyl and, and, and CDs for sale. Uh, the show is going to run 75 minutes or so with no intermission. There are some mild strobing effects that will get used in the show tonight if that information is relevant to you. Uh, I want to thank you all for choosing to be here tonight. So what I want you to do right now is turn to the person on your left and give them an enormous round of applause. There's no money in this wide world who could be better suited to be at your side for the next 75 minutes of postmodern revisionist performing arts, except for, of course, the person on your right side. So turn to the person on your right and give them a huge round of applause. And now, as long as you're not sitting in the very back row, which would be foolish because we have all these great seats in the front row, you should turn to the person behind you and give them a huge round of applause. And now the person sitting in front of you! And that's it for me for now. Uh, stick around after the show and talk to us if you liked it. But for now, I invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the Fox & Mega Theater's production of Good Night Absalom.
and gentlemen, boys and girls and lovers beyond the binary, good evening. I'm here tonight to tell you a story. Our story takes place down, down, down in the little border town of Absalom. A lusty and dusty hideout of train robbers, gamblers, smugglers, bon vivants, and other such persons of ill fame. Yes, lovers, this was the unholy hotbed of homegrown sin, the depot of depravity, the metropolis of immorality. Without further ado, may I present to you Absalom, city of exploits. tonight is about one extremely pivotal game of chess. And we cannot begin our story without getting to know the game's two players. Would you like to meet them? Yes! Darlings, I'm not sure you understand just how exciting this all is. <laughs> These two are mortal enemies, and their forthcoming conflict will be driving all the action of this here story tonight. So I ask you again, are you ready to meet these truly magnificent antagonists? Yeah! That's starting to sound a bit more like it. On my right, it is my great privilege to present to you the infamous Don Enrique de Espada, the Baron of Bones! Wait, 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 hang on, hang on. Cover him back up. Yes, you, they're her up now. <laughs> All right, you see, a conflict is not exciting unless we have two sides rooting against each other. So, everyone on this side, your job is to support Don Enrique. Everything he does, you adore. When he makes a good move, you applaud. And when I introduce him again in a moment, you're gonna scream like your lives depend on it. You got it? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, yep. and everyone on this side, your job is to support his ancient foe, whose handsome portrait is hiding behind this sheet. Everything he does, you just gotta be ecstatic. When he captures an enemy's piece, you go ballistic. And when I introduce him again in a moment, you're gonna scream so loudly that we get a noise complaint. All right? Yeah. All right? Yeah. All right. On 
my right. It is my great privilege to present to you the infamous Don Enrique de Espada, Ilo Bobianca! <laughs> Don Enrique, a professional or another, that he had a controlling interest in every business operating west of the Great Divide, and plenty of the east side too. Coal, steel, lumber, power. It didn't really matter what it was, because all the money led back to him. They said that the President of the United States himself didn't lace up his shoes without Don Enrique checking the knots. And if it didn't suit him, well, then the president would just have to go barefoot. Oh, and the white suit? They say he wore white to remind the world that no man has spilled a drop of his blood. It told ordinary people that dirt didn't touch nobody's soul very way up high. And woe on the people of Absalom for on that... This is your turn. I'm just checking in on you. Are you ready? Yeah! Oh, no, you got this. And woe on the people of Absalom, for on that same Sunday that Don Enrique rode into town, so to arrive his ancient foe, Don Carlos de la Cruz, Illuminate! <laughs> Nobody knew for certain where he came from. A rumor had it, he was raised overseas with a crop in one hand and cold iron in the other. He built his vast fortune running cotton on the steamboats of New Orleans and was soon seen spreading into every market in every cardinal direction. Every man knew him. Every man feared him. And whether or not they knew it, just about every man worked for him. Cold. Cunning and indomitable, Don Carlos knew the road to true power required only one thing, ruthlessness. Yeah. And on that fateful Sunday, in the dirty, dusty streets of Absalom, in the deep, deep belly of July, it came to pass that Don Enrique de Espada <laughs> Enrique's terms were simple enough. One game would be played, and one game only. The loser of this game would freely hand on to the winner all of their vast holdings, including all land, capital, and stocks. Then be ridden out into the middle of the desert, tied up hand and foot in a gunny sack, and left for dead. Then the world would truly know, once and for all, who really was the bigger man. Uh-oh. <laughs> Upon hearing the terms, Don Carlos gruffly accepted, and the two sat down in the shade of the Pozo Hondo to begin their game. Well, before they could begin their game, they had to work out this technical difficulty, because nobody wanted to listen to that buzz the whole show. We're going to take a moment. We're going to take a moment. I, I'm actually going to interview the audience. You, go, you carry on up there. I'm going to do this. So I need to know why you support Don Enrique. What did he do that's so great? I need to hear it from, from, the, from the mouths of the people themselves. Why do you support Don Enrique? Don Enrique supports the arts. Okay, Don Enrique. Oh, I see, I see. Did Don Enrique supply these markers tonight? He did, he did. All right, all right, Don Enrique. We're going to go over to the Don Carlos side now. All right, Don Carlos, who really wants to talk about Don Carlos? I know you just met him, but I know that you're like, you're there for Don Carlos. Like, Don Carlos is here for you. So why don't you tell me what makes Don Carlos so great? Yes, you. Don Carlos is the best chess player in the land. How do you know this, sir? Word of mouth. 
Is it the mustache? Did the mustache tell you that Don Carlos is indeed the best chess player in the land? The mustache tells all. The mustache tells all. Our technical difficulties are taken care of, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. <laughs> See, now I know a little bit more about why these two sides are rooting against each other and why Don Enrique and Don Carlos are so important. Thank you to my interviewees. You are the real stars of the show. All right. <laughs> Don Enrique's terms were simple enough. One game would be played and one game only. The loser of this game would freely give unto the winner all of their vast holdings, including all land, capital, and stocks. Then be ridden out into the middle of the desert, tied up hand and foot in a gunny sack and left for dead. Then the world would truly know, once and for all, who really was the bigger man. Upon hearing the terms, Don Carlos gruffly accepted, and the two sat down in the shade of the Pozo Hondo to begin their game. The game would be conducted on top of an old stone table painted with 32 black squares and 32 white. This would be the battleground. But to begin the game, the gamblers, of course, needed pawns. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. There is no shortage of opportunity here. All right, pawns. Let's each of you now ship shape. Let's go. Good morning, Starshine. The first says hello. We got a job for you to do. This is an opportunity here. Let's get you in your costumes. Oh, it looks like you're going to play for Don Carlos over there on that side. There we go. And it looks like you're going to play for Don Enrique. That's right. Shoulders back, feet apart. Stand up straight up front. Oh, and this will never do, Buckaroos. We're going to have to separate you two. You're going to play for Don Carlos, and you're going to play for Don Enrique. That's right. You over there, and you over there. And look at you, my little professional, already in position. The boss is going to land you, my little ace in the hall. All right. Today, we're going to have you working on the railroad. Always more work to be done on the railroad, just like the papers say. Any day now, they're going to be connecting Absalom out west, and you'll suddenly find yourself working banker's hours. But don't forget, you're the weakest pieces on the board, and you can only move one space at a time. We wouldn't want you getting ahead of yourselves now, would we? <laughs> All right, band, are you ready? Take it away. most important part, the motives. This would have been a real boring scene without the motives. your patience, lovers. Now, let's hear it for the pawns of Don Enrique!
sure it'll be all over the papers soon. Hey, what's your name again? No matter. Who cares? What's in a name anyhow? The more important question is, how do they find you on social media? <laughs> you know what? We don't have time for this. Now go on, get out of here before they get tired of looking at you. <laughs> it was a skirmish, lovers. Nothing more. Think of it like a playful way to check each other for weaknesses. Like market research. But now, now it was time to take risks. Now it was time to send in the Cavalli.
Certainly, ma'am. It's our characters. The ones on stage. The knights? What's wrong with them? They kind of look like the frozen solid. Well, it's their lines. They're waiting for them. Well, why are they waiting for them? Why don't they just speak? They're non-verbal characters, sugar. Everyone in our show is. Well, except for you and I, of course, because we've got the microphones. Then how can I be of service? I need you to take that script right there. Yes. And read for the white knot, top of page 10. Right now? Yes, now. And hurry up, our poor audience is terribly confused. Yes. <laughs> Yield, shouted the white knight. Yield thyself, retorted the black knight. I shall run thee clean through, for thou hast no horse. <laughs> well, now thou hast no sword. Yeah! <laughs> 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 and he just looked like the cat who ate the canary. I can read this next part. It kind of looks like somebody spilled something on the script. Ad lib then. Ad lib? You, you ain't got no other copies? Not on hand, sugar. Don't worry, you'll do just fine. Now, excuse me, I've got to go use the little boy's room. Oh, wait, uh, just uh, how the heck am I supposed to. And just who's. Death and doom are we talking about here? Asked Steel Cavalieri inquisitively. Death comes for all sinners. Who? Me? But well, you ain't suggesting that I've sinned, are you, Holy Father? <laughs> Said the Cavalieri. If thou art here, then thou hast surely sinned. Is that a fact? Where are we exactly? Thou art standing in the very heart of Babylon. It stretches around thee in a great labyrinth, invisible to the eye. If thou dost not lay down thy arms, thou shalt blindly wander its twisting passages for all time. Bent, eternal flow the blood upon thy sword. 
mentiras, mentiras, y nada más que mentiras. Este impostor no adora a vuestro señor, sino a su oscuro enemigo, la serpiente. George B. Bush, Osman, he are now comes a false prophet, sent to confuse thy wits with his verbal letter. Wait, what do you have against this guy? No habléis con este sirviente caído, hijo mío. Todos los de su especie son demonios. Los oscuros colores que porta revelan las oscuras intenciones en su corazón. Venid, acompañadme. Continuemos luchando por la gloria de la luz. Go to him, Osman, and you shall learn what a mock learns when it goes to the flame. This one shines with white light, just as he will burn you with his white villainy. Wait, but I still don't understand. Where are we? Why are we fighting each other? <laughs> thy steal thy fate the moment thou swore thy ill oath to the false white king. But when did that happen? Was that before the show? I don't think the audience saw that part. Nacisteis para servir noblemente a la gloria del rey blanco. Inicisteis un juramento antes de ser acostado en vuestra cuna. And thou hast spent thy life with the blood of the innocents upon thy sword. Repent and lay down thy arms. But I didn't choose to be the White Knight. It was just some costume they gave me. The Thy King is the great demon of Babylon! Throwing fat upon the suffering of ten thousand souls in bondage! Serve him not! No os dejéis engañar, hijo mío! Todos los de su especie son demonios! Enviados aquí para engañaros! Para haceros olvidar vuestra lealtad! Si queremos tener paz, tenemos que expulsar a todos los de su especie de la faz de la tierra. ¡Resististe su falta, señor! ¿Have either of you seen my horse? Vuestro caballo ha sido tomado por el mismo mal que os tienta ahora. And when you say tomado. Thy animal waits for thee in the deepest hell, Osman, if thou repentest not. Yeah, I don't think either of you actually answered my question. I have an idea. How about I go look for my horse and you two stay here and straighten out your theological differences? coming from anyway I uh, I, I, am, I am the mouth of, of the king I, I speak his command but you're still not helping me understand where the heck we are being told to fight each other I mean okay this is a cool show there's some interesting stuff going on and some really good dance numbers but I just think that there's a whole lot of assumptions being made here without giving any of us much context 
but I, uh, I am the, the, the mouth. I, I, I speak his... I, uh, okay, okay. Do you remember anything before this show started? Anything at all? Like, do you have any family or any pets? And what's with this old Two Kings business? I've been looking around, I don't see any crowns on any Great heads. Great Caesar's ghost! <laughs> what in the heck are you two doing? <laughs> You're entirely off script. But there is no script. Oh, there's the script. <laughs> Look, senorita, I'm not trying to put words in anyone's mouth. That's but... literally what you're doing. <laughs> but I just think that our two friends here, they're not sure if Don Enrique and Don Carlos actually exist. Darling, dear darling, 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 our two friends would not be here if Don Enrique and Don Carlos did not exist. Well, how do you know? I mean, all we ever seen of them are these two portraits and looking around, I don't think our cast is big enough to support two more characters. <laughs> I know because no one is my job, sugar. And I've been in the business of knowing, well, long since before you were born. I see. So you get to make changes to the story when you want to then. Changes? <laughs> no, no, no. I certainly can't. Only President Suffin could do such a, such a radical thing. Uh, but he doesn't need to. We've been telling this story every night for over 200 years. Just look at how much our audience loves this show. The Horseman, the Romance, Sweet Mary, the very town of Absalom itself. If anybody knows what a good story looks like, it's our boss. Now then. Well, did, he, did he write the story then? Frank, what on earth has gotten into your head Questions, questions, and more questions. You're boring our audience half to death, and our night and bishop are standing uselessly on the stage. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I'm just new here is all. Everybody just needs to do their job. Why is that so hard to understand? <sighs> Look, this scene has become just a disaster. <gasps> I know. Let's do the dance of the pawns again. <laughs> um... Hasn't the audience already seen the Dance of the Palms? But everyone adores the Dance of the Palms, Frank. Man versus man, brother versus brother. Just look at us, back in the saddle again. Which side will reign victorious? This time our ratings will be through the roof, through the roof, through the roof. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be fantastic, incredible. It's gonna be huge. Let's make this show great again. <laughs> I'm feeling better already. Aren't you? Frank! Are you ready? For the dance of the palms? Yes, for the dance of the palms! Yes, you don't need to be so touchy. Just play the dang song. One, two, a one, two, three. President Suppin, it's me. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I gave him every... I see. Well, I... Very well, then. I'll send in the rooks. Thank you. 
pretty sure the stagehand is making shadow puppets with your spotlight. <laughs> I mean, I think we should probably get on back to work. You have my deepest of apologies, sir. I know, I know, but... Well, what exactly is it that you'd like me to do? I can't... You mean, force them to perform? I really don't think that's a good idea, sir. <laughs> Very well. You have my word. Yes, sir. I'll go make sure they're ready. Cigars of Don Enrique de Espada and Don Carlos de la Cruz began to shorten as the crepuscular coyotes of the scrub lands began to stir in their dens after dreaming all day about their supper. The chessboard had grown nearly empty, save for a few final pieces. Those that had been captured laid in the dust by their feet the working poor, the clergy, soldiers, officers of the peace, all manner of persons and personages wrapped up in this total and all-consuming civil war waged between two kings in the streets of Absalom. But both of the two kings had yet to play their final pieces. Once they held closest at hand with a deep and jealous love. These are the most beautiful, the most powerful pieces on the board. They possess the freedom to move however far they sought, in whatever direction they so chose. Well, any direction on the board, that is. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and lovers of all kinds. It is my deep privilege to present to you the dance of the queens.
Don Carlos. I mean, I never heard of him before. Well, they're brothers, Frank. Our half brothers, anyway. Brothers? I thought they were sworn enemies. Yes, but brotherhood amongst kings often breeds enmity, especially if there's any question of succession to the father's throne. Whatever the true nature of their relationship is, tell you, it is a simple one. Perhaps each secretly loves the other for being the only worthy opponent on this shrunken earth. Or perhaps they wage war against one another each day out of a certain kind of respect, a declaration of admiration. Because in Absalom, a man's world consists of nothing but himself and his opponent. Everyone else is just cattle. But why do they play this game? Their father raised them to play it. It's their profession, their vocation, their only true love. And who is their father? You mean you haven't guessed yet? It's our boss, of course, President Sutton.
It's the story of one father playing a very complicated game of solitaire. Miss, I believe that you could change this story if you truly wanted to. I've heard how you feel about our boss, but don't forget, we're the ones with the microphones. Starlight shone down on the empty board as its last two ghosts danced around each other in the paradox of a lonely stalemate. Perhaps it was low light, or perhaps it was arrogance. But in all of their calculations, both of the two kings had made an enormous mistake. Don Carlos had failed to notice a third monarch on the board. a mis hermanos, a mis hijos, 
a mis tíos. A la orilla del lago me eché a llorar. Me hice tan pequeña y tan gris que muchos me confundieron con un montoncito de polvo. Sí, yo misma, la madre del pedernal y de la estrella. En mi vientre nacía el águila. Yo era la montaña que engendra cuando sueña la casa del fuego. La olla primordial en la que el hombre se cuece y se hace hombre. En la noche de las palabras degolladas, mis hermanas y yo, tomadas de la mano, bailamos y cantamos alrededor de la I. Única torre en pie del alfabeto arrasado. En otros tiempos, cada hora nacía el vaho de mi aliento. Yo era el día tatuado y la noche desnuda. El pequeño insecto de jade que canta entre las hierbas del amanecer. El sensontle de barro que convoca a los muertos. Estoy sola y caída. Grano de maíz desprendido de la mazorca del tiempo. Siémbrame entre los fusilados. Naceré del ojo del capitán. Lluéveme. Asoleame. Mi cuerpo arado por el tuyo ha de convertirse en campo en el que se siembra uno y se cosechan cientos. Muere en mis labios, nace en mis ojos. De mi cuerpo brotan imágenes. Bebe de esas aguas y recuerda lo que olvidaste al nacer. Part of the story, miss? I'm starting to think it's all part of the story. They are, you are, so am I. Is this part of the story? Sure. Why not? So, so what do we do now? Well, doesn't every story in Absalom need to end with a bang? Enterprises has suspended the current operations at this location and as such will be immediately terminating all worker contracts. Please return all props, costumes, and musical instruments by the end of the day today. 
Sutton Enterprises would like to thank you for your services rendered and will be providing every employee with a generous severance package. Please step forward now to pick up your check. I never got an email about this. <laughs> President Sutton. Oh, uh, President Sutton. He must have been the free market capitalist system. Right? Sure was. And what about me? Were you the media? <laughs> well, call a meeting press, right? There's one thing I'm still just not quite getting. What was the butterfly supposed to be? The butterfly? The butterfly was just a butterfly. gave us our swords, and they gave us our scythes, and they gave us our horses, and told us to ride. They said, this is the glory for which you will die. Strike true, take your enemies with you. So we leveled our charge with our banners held high toward the foes of the righteous across the divide. And when the wind blew against us, it carried a cry. It was the same that we just gave our life to. So the battle raged all through the valley, and the red settled in with the green, and the blue sky overhead held the question unsaid. How the black and the white had chosen to fight when the spoils of war could be nothing more than a handful of bitter regrets. And as the sun made its way to the west and the night did its best to cover the day, the few with their breath still among them wished only to go back to what they had laid.
so much. Uh, to all of you out there, to all of our uh, live streaming fans out there, I think there's probably a few of them. Um, thanks so much for coming. This was such a fun night. Despite the wind threatening to uh, blow this truck over. Um, let's see. Uh, now is that time in the show where I mentioned again what I said at the beginning. If you would like to support us, uh, there's, well, there's several great ways. You can go to our website. Uh, we have three shows left. We're going to Grand Rapids uh, this next weekend, followed by a Sunday night show a week from tonight in Detroit. If you have friends in those cities, tell them we're coming. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, also, connect with us online. That's the way you do things these days. Uh, go to webfoxandbeggar.com. You can find out so much more about uh, what we've done, what we're going to be doing, where we'll be next, all that. And then, of course, you can also totally support us with your wallets. We've got uh, uh, some wonderful socially distanced bu light-up buckets coming around in a little bit. If you would like to give every one of us one dollar, we ask for a suggested donation of fifteen dollars, because there's fifteen of us. Uh, you could totally give more than that, though. Uh, if you're out there in internet land, uh, we do take Venmo. Uh, you can find us at Fox and Bigger. Uh, and we were on PayPal and Cash App and all the things. Talk to us if you can, if you didn't bring any cash. So I think that's about all I have for you. Uh, thank you so much to our hosts, Nikki and everyone else here at the Vibe Is that weird? Yeah. Um, oh, yes. Oh, and we have gorgeous posters that were designed by my friend Dio Kramer out of Minneapolis. Plus, take one. They're lovely. Uh, we'll be going around with them in these buckets. Feel free to grab one on your way out. And if you didn't get a program, you should, because on the back there's a very important uh, poem, uh, if you didn't understand the poem in tonight's show. So I think that's all I have for you. Thanks again. Uh, hang out if you want. We're going to be hanging out. And uh, have a great night.